What if there was one pattern? One sequence of notes that eclipsed all others? A curated combination of limb movements that house the key to musical freedom known only by an innate few. A pattern comprised of rights, lefts, and kicks that would unlock the mysteries of the rhythmic cosmos. Yeah, that doesn't exist. In an effort to get you to click on drum lesson videos, YouTubers have been using fancy adjectives to describe patterns for about 10 years now. And I'm a fan of this tactic. I don't think there's anything wrong with calling a fill or a groove sick or cool or impressive or amazing if the lesson actually contains content that those words could accurately describe. But the reality is all rudiments and patterns are just words within the rhythmic language. So saying that one pattern or fill or groove is better than another or cooler than another is like saying that one word in the English language is superior to another word not really how language works. Now with that said, we all have our favorite words in spoken languages and in rhythmic language. Both your personal social circle and culture itself kind of dictate to us which words are gonna be well received or at least more commonly spoken. We said groovy in the 70s, gnarly in the 80s, dude in the 90s, and the 2000s have given us a whole collection of ridiculous mouth noises. And we could follow these trends in drumming as well. Certain rhythmic concepts and patterns and grooves and fills have been introduced to us on hit albums through famous drum solos and yes, even through YouTubers. So today, I wanna to give you an eight note pattern that has made its way deep into my musical vocabulary. Now, I know I just talked about how no pattern or word uh, can be better or superior to another one, so I'm not sure if I can convince you that this pattern is perfect. But if you give me a chance, I'm gonna show you four things that I love about this pattern, and maybe we can work towards justifying the title of this video. I'm Adam the Orlando Drummer, and this is The Perfect Pattern. The first thing that makes this pattern so sick is how mobile it can be or how easy it is to move around the drum set. This is mostly because there's only three notes within the pattern that we actually want to move or orchestrate, which would be both of those right hands and that single left hand. So in this first example, we're gonna play this pattern twice inside of a measure of 16th notes. Our focus here is to move those three notes of the pattern to different surfaces of the kit with the left hand diddles staying ghosted on the snare. And remember that this is definitely not a speed exercise, but more of a creativity slash exploration game. Let's give it a shot. Now, whatever orchestrations you come up with here are totally valid, but keep in mind that you don't wanna get locked into one specific orchestration or one specific placement. Just like in English, we need to be able to use all of our words for a variety of different purposes, because think about how lame it would be if you could only use a word inside of the same sentence that you originally learned it in. Words, whether rhythmic or spoken, are supposed to be very versatile and kind of malleable. So you can keep this thing loose and therefore a lot more useful by remembering to change its orchestration often. And the second thing I love about this pattern is that it has a really high speed potential. When we think about patterns that have speed limitations, it's usually because the pattern contains three of the same limb in a row. So for example, a non-alternating flammed paradiddle, flammed right, left, left, that's gonna be tough to speed up because as we loop that around, you can see we have three lefts in a row and this inevitably will limit how fast we can actually take that rudiment or that pattern. But any pattern that's made up of only singles and doubles can easily be taken to a much higher speed I'll show you what I mean. Now, of course, a huge majority of patterns are gonna be made up of some kind of single-double combination, but I do feel like this specific pattern just has that 
fast feeling sometimes, more so than a lot of other patterns at least. And the third thing I love about this pattern is that it can change subdivisions. Now disclaimer, all patterns can change subdivisions. It's just a matter of whether or not you like how it sounds or if it's gonna be worth your time to learn. Sometimes forcing a pattern into a new subdivision is just a waste of time because it sounds terrible. So today's pattern is eight notes long and playing it inside of a measure of 16th note triplets is possible, but a little bit too tricky to help me illustrate today's point. So to make this a tad easier, we're gonna make this a nine note pattern by simply adding a kick drum to the end and that slight modification makes this pattern really musical for constructing triplet phrases. So we'll play our nine note version of the pattern two times in a measure of triplets, which gives us 18 notes or three beats of 16th note triplets. But to reach that total of 24 notes that we need, I'm actually gonna shorten this pattern uh, for the third time that we play it in this measure. So in beat four, you can see that our six note version of the pattern is just right, left, left, kick, right, left. First, let's just try this out. Kick and snare nice and slow. We just wanna get a, a vibe for this new phrase. Then we'll pick up the speed and move this around the kit. And the fourth and final thing that I love about this pattern is that it plays well with other patterns. It can definitely be frustrating when we spend weeks or even months getting down a really specific groove or a fill or a pattern only to find that it's really limited in what it can do. It's like learning the word blandishment. Dope word, but you're not gonna use that one very often. Now in the case of this pattern, it's surprisingly easy to sneak this thing in alongside other musical ideas. So for this next example, we're gonna improvise a three beat fill, anything you want, any pattern, any subdivision, and then we're gonna end the fill with our eight note pattern in beat four as 30 second notes. And I would really encourage you to get creative uh, with those first three beats, the first 75% of the measure, because I think you'll find that a really wide variety of ideas can sit next to this original pattern and they sound good more often than not. All right, now check this out. We can also reverse this idea, starting with our eight note pattern in beat one, and then improvising the last three beats of the measure. That would sound something like this. Just kidding, I have one more quick thing to show you. So you might remember when I first brought this pattern up to speed at this mark of the video, I actually stopped playing the pattern in the center of the pattern instead of completing the eight note phrase when I barked that hi-hat. And that was genuinely an accident, but it's a super easy mistake to make because we can split this pattern into two individual four note groupings and then we can reverse those groupings and it still sounds awesome. So our pattern would now be kick, right, left, kick, right, left, left, kick. Check it out.
and we're done. Now, I don't know if I accomplished the goal of convincing you that this is a perfect pattern. And as much as I love this specific pattern, I'm still not convinced that we can call this or any other pattern perfect. What I hope that you can take away from this lesson is that there are definite advantages to certain patterns that allow us to be more musically expressive with them. This pattern for me has always stuck out as one that has a lot of different advantages. And for that reason, it's become a front runner in my arsenal of rhythmic words. So my question for you is, what's your perfect pattern? Can you make a case for it like I have in this lesson? If there's a pattern that you've learned that sticks out as more musical or more mobile or maybe just more fun, leave it in the comments and tell me why you love that pattern. I'll choose one person this week to get a free 30-day membership to orlandodrummer.com. And by the way, it is currently member November, which is by far the best time of year to take the leap on online education. The member vaults of orlandodrummer.com contain over 550 drum lessons and practice loops, including tons of interviews with pro drummers, beginner through advanced groove and fill courses, hand and foot speed boot camps, audio and social media masterclasses, and tons more. Through the rest of the month, my six month and annual memberships are on sale, and both of those subscriptions include a free pair of my custom Vic Firth 5A barrel sticks. I also have active military and veteran discounts running for the remainder of the month. At the first link in the description, you can tour the member vaults and watch a preview of every lesson and loop on the site before signing up. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Adam here, the Orlando drummer, and I will catch you in the next one. Later.